Hey, Sandhurst kids, it's good to see you again. Listen, we have got a super interesting question today, but before I tell you what it is, let's play a little game. I'm going to say a phrase and I want you to shout out the first thing that comes to your mind and we'll see if your answer matches mine. All right, here we go. The phrase is gonna be at the bottom of your screen. So if you can read, that might help you as well. Number one, peanut butter and how about jelly? <laughs> All right, number two, salt and I was thinking pepper. All right, number three, this one's a little bit harder. As quiet as a, what about mouse? All right, and here's our last one. Ready? God is, I was thinking love. And I was probably thinking that because at the end of our lesson today, I really hope that's what you're going to see is that God is love and he loves us so much. So let's get started. Now, before I tell you the question, let me tell you who the question is about. It's about Cain, and I thought maybe we should review who Cain is. Now, you'll remember at the beginning of the world, God created Adam and Eve. And after they got banished from the Garden of Eden, God gave them a son. His name was Cain. He was the first child ever to be born on planet Earth. Isn't that incredible? And he, they, God also gave Adam and Eve another son. His name was Abel. So that was Cain's brother. Now we can read about Cain and Abel in Genesis chapter 4. So if you want to follow along, this is a good place for you to pause your video, pull out your Bible, and turn to Genesis chapter 4. When we pick up, in verse 2, you're going to see that they're probably already grown-ups because they both have jobs. So let's look at the second part of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 2. It says, Abel took care of sheep, but Cain farmed the land. After some time, Cain gathered some of the things he had grown, and he brought some of them as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering he brought the best parts of some of the animals from his flock. They were the very first animals born to their mother. The Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering, but he wasn't pleased with Cain and his offering. So Cain became very angry, and his face was sad. So do you see what's happened? They both brought an offering to the Lord, but Abel carefully selected the very best of what he had to give to the Lord. And Cain just gave some of his things to the Lord. And so that's why the Lord was not pleased with Cain and his offering. And so Cain became so jealous of Abel. Look what he did next. It was something really awful. Skip down to verse 8. Cain said to his brother one day, let's go out into the field. So they went out. And there, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Did you hear that, boys and girls? He killed his brother Abel. Cain, the very first child born on planet Earth, also became the very first murderer. What do you suppose a good punishment for Cain would have been for murdering his brother? Doesn't it seem like he deserved death? That would have been his penalty if he had done that crime in South Carolina today. The penalty for murdering somebody is death. But I want you to see what penalty God gave him. God shows lots of grace to Cain, and he doesn't kill him. Down in verse 11, we read that God said, I'm going to drive you away from this place, and the ground will no longer produce plants. You will be a restless person who wanders around on the earth. And not only that, if you skip down to verse 17, it says that Cain had a wife who became pregnant and she gave birth to a son. So did you see that? Not only did God spare Cain's life, but he also gave him a family. We see in that an incredible picture of God's grace and mercy on somebody who deserved much worse. 
But that brings us to our question for today. Who was Cain's wife? I mean, we've talked about Adam and Eve, and we talked about Cain and Abel, and Abel's gone. Who did Cain marry? Well, the Bible tells us that Adam and Eve had lots of other sons and daughters. And so obviously, Cain's wife must have been one of their daughters. But did you figure that out? Who would that daughter have been to Cain? It was his sister. Ooh, lots of kids, when they've asked me that question and have gotten the answer in the past, have said, ooh. You know why they reacted that way? Because nowadays, it is actually against the law to marry a close relative like your brother or sister. But do you know it was not our government who thought of that rule first? It was God. If you flip over a few pages to the book of Leviticus, Leviticus 18, you can read that when Moses was up on the mountain with God, God is the one who first came up with that law. And many people believe the reason for that is that at that point in history, God knew that if close relatives get married, their children could be very unhealthy. And so God did it to protect people. He did it for their good. Prior to that, earlier in the Bible, it wasn't against the law. In fact, there are other Bible characters you've probably heard of who married their close relatives. If you looked at Genesis chapter 20, you would see that Abraham married Sarah who was actually his half-sister. And if you flipped over a few other chapters to Genesis 24 and read about Isaac, you would realize that Isaac married his cousin, Rebekah. But it wasn't against the law then. But at the proper time, God made a rule to protect people. And so there are three things, boys and girls, I'd love for you to see about this story today. Number one, we see God's love for people. You know, we all deserve to die for our sins. But God is a God who loves to show us grace and mercy. You know, because of Jesus dying on the cross, he, he paid for all of our sins as he hung there. And so God can offer to us grace and mercy when we come to him instead of the punishment that we deserve. The second thing I would love for you to see is that when we sin, it doesn't just hurt us, it hurts others around us. Think about what Cain's sin did to his family. His mother and father lost not only Abel, they lost him when he was banished to wander. It also hurt his wife. She wasn't the one who murdered Abel, and yet because she was his wife, she also had to wander with him without a home far away from her parents. That's why God asks us to live righteous lives, because he knows that's what best is what's best for us. And the third thing I hope you see is that when God gives us a law, it's to protect us. It's because he wants for us blessing and joy and peace. Yes, God is love. And that's why we want you boys and girls to love him with all your hearts.